welcome to day five of Halloween Stream Fest 2015. Yes, the dead face is back, I'm sorry. And even though I don't like to think about it, I know Halloween week is coming to an end very soon. But that doesn't mean that Spooky has to stop after Halloween is over. If you're anything like me, horror and Halloween is all year round. But Kaylee, I've got no new horror content. Well, hopefully today I'm gonna give you at least one suggestion that you'll find to be in your liking. Today I will be recommending horror content from a multitude of platforms, including books, movies, TV shows, and some YouTube horror. Aww. Now, all of the recommendations I'm gonna be making today are things I've already seen or read myself and have judged it, in my opinion, to be good horror. Any of these items would be great on Halloween night if you're looking for a scare or if you're just looking for some new horror content. Also, if any of you out there are horror aficionados and you're on top of it all the time with new content, you might not find anything new here, but you never know. You can stick around and find out. And also, I'm gonna try to leave this video as spoiler-free as possible, but if it's in the blurb, it's fair game. Okay. Also in the description there will be links that take you to each individual item if one catches your eye where you can either purchase, watch, or learn more information about that particular item. Also, I tried to include things that were easily accessible or purchasable. So let's get started! First we're gonna start off with books, and we'll start in the fiction subcategory. My first on the list is A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. A Head Full of Ghosts follows 14 year old Marjorie who begins showing signs of acute schizophrenia, and after no doctors are able to help her, her family reluctantly reluctantly turns to the Catholic Church. They come into contact with a Catholic priest who believes she's being possessed by a demon. And somehow a TV production company hears about the possession and wants to film the family for a reality TV show called The Possession. The family is strapped for cash and they agree to let the people film their daughter's exorcism. This book is one to savor even though it's kind of on the short end of adult novels. Great stuff, really unnerving, really makes you question your perception of your own memories. Highly recommend this one. Next up I have Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. A terrifying evil force appears on Earth, however, anyone who glimpses this entity is driven to commit deadly acts of violence against others and eventually turn it on themselves. In this book, you're dealing with an apocalyptic entity you can't even look at or it's all over for you and anyone nearby. Five years after this all began, Mallory and her two young children set out into the world for the first time, seeking a safer place, but they're faced with a long and terrifying journey ahead of them. They must travel blindfolded down a river using only their ears to guide them and keep them safe from the entities that destroyed the world. Told in alternating past and present chapters, this one keeps you going at breakneck speed. I couldn't put it down and it was awesome and truly unsettled me. <laughs> I think part of the reason I love this book so much was the evil entity is kind of left up to the reader's imagination. Since it's never described in the book and you can't see it, you kind of get to imagine what that looks like. Plus, how terrifying is it to walk around blindfolded knowing that these things are walking amongst you? <laughs> That's Nope City, which is why I recommend this. My last recommendation for the straight up horror category is Last Days by Adam Neville. Last Days follows a documentarian named Kyle who's struggling for cash. Then he gets an offer that's too good to refuse, to direct a documentary about a cult called Temple of the Last Days that ended its reign in a massacre back in 1975. And since Kyle has complete creative freedom and everything's already paid for and all he has to do is show up and direct, of course he says yes. But after he uncovers more and more of the cult's dark history, he finds himself being pulled in over his head and he realizes he might not make it out alive. If you're into cults like me, well, I'm not in a cult, I'm into cults, I'm not but I'm not, you know what I'm saying. Definitely check this one out. Our next horror book category is horror with other elements, meaning horror with maybe a little sci-fi, a little fantasy, a little romance, whatever. You get the picture. The first book I had for you is Night Film by Marisha Pessel. The story begins with the death of a girl named Ashley Cordoba, who is the daughter of a cult horror movie director known for his reclusive nature named Stanislas Cordoba. Journalist Scott McGrath suspects otherwise, so he begins investigating Investigating the circumstances surrounding Ashley's death, and as he's pulled further and further into Cordova's twisted world, the case turns more personal, and McGrath realizes he might be putting everything.
everything he cares about in danger. Again, this one has a little bit of a cult vibe to it. There are supplemental materials in it from like internet blog posts and newspaper articles, things like that that make it seem more real. It's part mystery, part horror, part comedy, part suspense thriller, and part creepy, but it's 100% great. That was so lame. Please don't let my lameness sway your decision as to whether or not you should check out this book. You totally should. The last fiction book recommendation I have is from 172 Hours on the Moon by Johan Harstad. I'm probably butchering that. I apologize. In this book, NASA decides to hold an international lottery where three teens will be chosen to spend an entire week up on the moon base. And in this book, NASA hasn't been to the moon in 40 years. All three of the selected teenagers have their reasons for wanting to escape from Earth, but what they find on the moon is a far cry from a week-long vacation. Instead, they find something much more sinister and realize that no one is coming to save them. Trapped on the moon. Now, I'm not a scientist, but the science in this sounded okay to me. But please keep in mind, science was my worst subject in school. I am terrible at it. But it's more the horror in this one that gets me. It's something about how simple it is and how creepy it really is to be trapped in such an isolated setting where there's no help and almost no hope of getting home. And for our next book category, I have two titles for you. They are both nonfiction, meaning they're true. Or supposedly true, as goes with this first one, The Amityville Horror by Jay Anson. Now, I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, have heard about the Amityville Horror and that it's based on a true story. The Lutz family moved into the Amityville house in December of 1975 and left just 28 days later fleeing without any of their possessions. The count of what supposedly happened in those 28 days is in this book. So if you haven't already, go check it out. Even if you don't believe it's genuine, it's a freaky read. My last non-fiction recommendation has to, has to, has to be Dead Mountain, the untold true story of the Dyatlov Pass incident. And it's by Donny I, 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 her. If you've never heard of the Dyatlov Pass incident, go Google it. Back in 1959, a group of nine hikers ventured into the Russian Ural Mountains and died under mysterious circumstances. And even now, decades later, there is speculation as to what happened. And there are so many theories out there. It's ridiculous. Everything from aliens to government conspiracy cover-ups to yetis who live on the mountain. This book not only provides an accurate journey of what happened to the hikers as they hiked into the mountains, up until their last known point of contact, but it also gives you a theory all on its own. One that I don't think you've ever heard before. Even if you know a lot about this case, I recommend you check out this book. It's one of the greatest sources for it. Even if you already know a lot about this case, I recommend you check this book out. It's a good book. It's a good recounting. Great nonfiction. Great work. Our next category of books is comic books slash graphic novels. Now, a couple days ago, I mentioned a horror comic called Witches by Scott Snyder, and today I'm here to recommend it to you. I believe I believe it's still an ongoing series, but the first volume compiles the first six issues. It takes the mythology of witches to a much more disturbing level. The artwork is beautiful and weird, but it fits the tone perfectly. It's got your basic setup where a family moves away to a remote town to try and kind of start over and escape their past, but something ancient and evil is lurking in their woods, and it is hungry. Check this one out. It's awesome, creepy, really unique too. And my last comic book and my last book recommendation overall is Through the Woods by Emily Carroll. It's an illustrated anthology of five truly creepy tales. If you like creepypastas or the No Sleep Forum, I highly recommend this book. The illustrations are beautiful and the stories are unnerving and creepy and very original to me. Perfect for a Halloween quick read or anytime quick read, honestly. Emily also does horror comics on her website and I highly recommend you check those out too. The link is in the description. She's an incredible writer and an incredible illustrator. I'm not kidding. If you hate every other suggestion I make today, go look at those web comments and check out Through the Woods, okay? Do it. I don't have any regular horror movies. These are all found footage and documentary. I haven't been keeping up this year with new horror releases, so I can't really say what's going on right now. So on to the films I can recommend to you. And again, if you hate found footage film, you can skip ahead. I like found footage. I think it's awesome, especially if it's done right. First up, I have Lake Mungo, which is an Australian horror film. It documents a family's strange experiences that start to happen after their 16-year-old daughter, Alice, drowns in Lake Mungo. They enlist the help of a parapsychologist, but as they uncover more and more about their daughter's life, they realize it wasn't all as it seemed, and the truth behind it all is very haunting, and I just got chills thinking about that scene. Holy shit. This one's a bit of a slow burner, so only watch it if you're kind of in the mood for that, and I recommend you watch it alone at night 
in the dark. It's very eerie and it feels very real. One of the realest mockumentaries out there I've seen as far as I can tell. The second recommendation I have is The Bay. It's a little bit of science fiction, a little bit of creature feature, a little bit of creepy, a little bit of gore, and a whole lot of strange. But in a frightening real life sort of on July 4th, 2009, a menace swept through the town of Claridge, Maryland, but the full story hasn't been told until now. The Bay really plays with the possibilities of using found footage for film and does a great job with it. Some of the acting is a little cheesy, but if you can look past that, it's a good horror film to watch. Lastly, I have The Den, which I saw on Netflix. I think it's still there. If you were looking forward to the horror movie that came out earlier this year called Unfriended to see if maybe it could offer something different, but found yourself very disappointed please check out The Den. It plays on the Omegle chat room type horror, but does it better. When a young woman sees a brutal murder on an online chat room, she quickly finds herself falling into a nightmare where she might meet the same grisly fate. I know that's vague, but I don't want to say too much about it. It does have its drawbacks, but I think it's a solid entry to the found footage genre. Our last movie category is documentaries, and I have two for you, and I believe I watched them both on Netflix. First, we have Cropsy, which follows two filmmakers tracing the origins of several urban legends. It's well done, well researched, and well shot. And let's be honest, real life horror is the creepiest kind of horror. Watch this if you're into urban legends or creepypastas. And finally, the last documentary recommendation and last movie recommendation is The Nightmare. It was released rather recently and explores the phenomenon of sleep paralysis, which I now realize looking back at a lot of my childhood nightmares, I experienced. Now this one wasn't terribly scary, creepy for sure, but don't expect to walk out of it terrified. What I do like about this film is the focus it puts on sleep paralysis and the way it portrays it and how it shows that everyone experiences it in different ways. I feel it did the condition justice. Next, I have two TV shows for you, or rather two mini-series for you to check out. Again, both on Netflix. First up is Black Mirror. It's a British anthology TV show that features dark, speculative fiction, particularly dealing with the consequences of new and rising technologies. Now this isn't horror like you used to, this is horror in a real sense. The technology around you is awesome, but in a world where new technology is literally invented every day, it's important to remember as humans where we draw the moral line. And this miniseries steps over that line. Some of the episodes are better than others, there's only six, I believe, but they're all worth a watch. And all of it makes you a little sick thinking about the possibilities of technology in the future. And yay, Netflix picked up 12 more episodes for this series, woohoo! Ah, go watch it now. My last recommendation for this category is Darknet, which is also on Netflix and it is a Canadian horror anthology series. And I don't mean horror anthology as in like American Horror Story where every season has a theme, it's an episodic anthology series. There's only six episodes, but it is perfect, especially if you like Asian horror, probably because it's been adapted from an Asian horror anthology show called Torihara. Each episode has its own little plot line, but they all stem from a website called Darknet where people can post most notorious and criminal things online. All the episodes are weird and funny and bizarre and downright creep city. And finally, if you're looking to watch some horror no further than your YouTube screen, look and no further. I implore you, I need you to go watch Pony Smasher, please. And if you like his stuff, subscribe. He's an incredible filmmaker and his shit scares the shit out of me. In fact, you've probably seen his award-winning short called Lights Out. Plus, he makes behind the scenes and making of videos that show you how he does all the special effects and how he shoots each video, which if you're a filmmaker or you're interested in that kind of stuff like me, is golden. And of course, watch all of his horror shorts. They're all wonderful. Unbelievable talent there. I don't know why he's not directing things right now. Or maybe he is. Maybe he's out there directing the next big horror movie. It wouldn't surprise me. Another horror movie short that I recommend is one called Don't Move. It's got a great concept and it is also award winning. Seriously talented work there. But I must warn you before you go watch this one, it gets really graphic and really violent at points. All right, friends, that's the end of the video. Remember there are links in the description to purchase, find out more, or watch each individual mentioned item. And no, I don't make any money off of these links, okay? I wouldn't tell you if I did. Also, if you guys want me to do more recommendation videos, please let me know 
know. And down in the comments, if you have recommendations, let me know that too, because I'm always looking for more horror goodness. Only two days left of Halloween Stream Fest. It's going by like that. I hope you've had fun so far. I have. And just so you know, next week, I think I'm only going to put out one video. Going to give myself some time to relax a little bit. I've been working really hard for the Halloween Stream Fest. I'm looking for full-time work in my real life because YouTube isn't my real job. So everything's been a little crazy over here, so I'm going to give myself a little time to recoup and revamp. But I will have a video out next week, and I think you're going to like it. It's one I've been planning for a while. And if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot. And share it with your friends. And also, if you want to see more creepy content from me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button in the corner. I'd hate for you to miss out on the last two days of Halloween Stream Fest. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow for day six of Halloween Stream Fest. Have a good and spooky day. Goodbye. This figure was tall, insanely inhumanly thin, which made its head look enormous for its body. Its eyes were bold and it was staring at me through the door and it wasn't blinking like it didn't have eyelids.